heading across way this morning go check out the new hole mold and um, see the way that they're laying that all up I'm driving through beautiful Mantio here right now and heading to Wan Chi's visit the, the the brothers at Crossweight and all their employees pretty excited to see this thing the boys have some techniques that are a little bit unique to, to what they're doing with all the composites and really looking forward to checking that out man and, and how light they're building this thing and strong and I know just enough about it to be a problem for certain but um, it sure appears that this thing's going to be a tank for how light it is. It's going to be a heck of a project, yeah. and, and it's uh, it, it, it's one of those deals where it'll make a break, you know. It'll I make think, a break, yeah, yeah. I I agree. Mean, it, it's got it's got the potential to be uh, really special, I think. Yeah, because it's uh, it, it's it's hard to say because I don't think anything's been built quite like no, it. Nobody's building anything quite like it, you know. A little little bit of it going on in New Zealand and yeah. Australia yeah. and yeah. stuff like that. They're building them light like that. They're strong as hell, and yeah, they all the strength good. I think will be there. Strength-wise, it's strength crazy. Strength-wise, it's going to be, yeah. It's yeah, crazy. It's, it's well over strength, which I think is, is good because you, you don't know when it's starting something new. Like yeah. Yeah. So we'll see. Yeah. Morning. Good to see you, buddy. Good seeing you. You know what? Yeah. Look at those bees. It would make crazy. It's huge. It's taking up your whole shop. <laughs> Are we rolling? You gonna repeat the question again? I'm gonna ask you each, each one. Okay, good. Right. We're gonna take our time. Okay. <laughs> okay. My name's Jordan Crossweight. I uh, go by Jordy. We got a background in boat building and charter fishing. Our family's been doing it for generations and started charter fishing full time when I was 17. Got lucky enough to go to the Bahamas in Mexico and, you know, Florida and all over the place and meet a lot of really cool people. Being able to take that knowledge or adventure or whatever you want to call it and be able to put it into something like this that Anthony's building is, is pretty, pretty special. New age technology that Aaron has really excelled at and put it into a sport fisher that's going to travel all over the, all over the world and you know he's grander fishing every day and it's going to be our boat that he's going to be on top of and you know boat builders dream really it's cool i mean you're you're building a tool for them to be able to go after their passion and to be a part of something like that is really special i'm aaron crossweight the ceo of crossweight custom composites i've been building boats all my life, me and Jordy are third generation boat builders. Our grandfather was Buddy Kennedy. Our dad's Bobby Crossway. They started building boats 50 years ago. Mm, 70s. 70s. I decided to start my own business and started Crossway Custom Composites. Ever since then, our dream has been to put the new technology into the sport fishing world, which is our heritage, our background and Anthony gave us the opportunity for this build and um, it's everything we want it to be and more and looking forward to seeing how this thing does on the water. Everything's here, the cabin, the cockpit, the brow, the hull, all of the uh, foam just went, all the divina cell went in the hull today as we were here, they just finished that off. Probably be ready to start infusing that in a few days, maybe as early as Wednesday. And uh, it's looking pretty good. Perfect, actually. Thing's a perfect size. You happy with everything so far? I am. The crews are all working hard, and uh, they're all doing a good job. They're great attention to detail. It's coming along pretty good. I, I think we're going to hit our schedule. The outer skin has been applied. The core, all the added, we call it patching, but it's the additional laminates over through walls. The rudder ports, the shaft log, the uh, strut, strut bomb. 
the, um, the thruster. bow thruster zip wakes all have additional laminates to beefing up those areas. What you're seeing today was the core being put on the hull sides. Um, after that is applied, we have some additional laminates, to more patching that we have to put back over the through holes to tie the inner and outer skins together. And then we will cover up with the uh, inner laminates. Once that's complete, we will uh, put peel ply on the, the whole surface and then we will start laying out our feed lines and our vacuum lines and get ready for the infusion process. That's crazy. <laughs> it's not even like a pound, is it? I it's barely. <laughs> I don't even think it's the technology is called resin infusion. It is the process of you laying in your outer skins, your core material, your inner skins, you set up your feed lines, your uh, vacuum lines, you bag the part, and then you inject the resin through it. Hand laminating, a good hand laminator can be one and a half to one resin to cloth. Most are usually closer to two to one. With the infusion process, it's one to one resin to cloth. So it gives you the strongest, lightest part possible with very, very little um, imperfections. Imperfections. Yeah. imperfections. Imperfections. Yeah. Core blocks is super tight. That's really great. I was thinking we were gonna have bigger gaps, but they're nice and tight. It's very good. That's awesome. Chines are solid. They will be. They will yeah, be. But they, uh, yeah, it's skin to skin contact on the chines on the keel, and then after that, they will put the uh, we'll fill it in. But we want skin to skin contact on anywhere there's going to be deflection. So we have right behind us now the bow deck cabin mold. Most all of the boat builders around here, everybody is a jig built and um, you know, there's not a thing wrong with the jig built boat, but for time savings and cost savings in the end, we have a full tool that has all of it combined. So instead of having all the secondary tabbing, all the fairing that goes along with having a, a jig built boat, right now we have a 95% fared surface ready to go. This boat has to be under 34,000 pounds to be picked up onto a mothership. To make it the strongest and lightest possible, this is the only way to go. Um, that, that other than pre-preg and having to deal with autoclaves and all that, this is, the, this is the best process. Our tow rail is built into the mold, our bow deck and our cabin are all attached, and the other really cool thing about it is all of our fibers can run full length. There's no secondary bonding, so it is a stronger, lighter part. Yeah, the top of the cabin goes all the way to the tip of the bow stem. You know, it runs full length, so you can't get much of stronger of a part than something like that. It's, it's pretty neat. It's super hard to believe that this is two parts. You guys got the big old butt up there. You know, the way we're doing this layup is we call it a hybrid bottom. When it came to fabricating the stringers, we didn't want composite stringers. We wanted something to help absorb the vibration. So we built them just like any of these other jig boats around here would, we use first stringers. But when uh, the jig boats are building their stringers, they're usually built into the jig and they're shaped on the hull bottom. So in for order for us to be able to uh, prefab them, go ahead and make them ahead of time. We built a condensed jig that had the shape of the bottom at every 16 inches throughout. So that way we could go ahead and shape the stringers to exactly where they're gonna be. And when we're, once the hole's infused, we can drop them in and they'll fit to the hole bottom. These stringers, these is what um, help strengthen the hull. The engines mount on these stringers and other equipment. Where the stringers go across the tunnels, there was a concave shape. And in order to get that, we had to cut little templates at each section so that we could shape and make sure that it would fit the, the hole bottom at the tunnel locations. The uh, stringer, in order to fit the hole bottom back here, each has to have their own little shape. So uh, we had them cut on the router and then that and made sure that each one of them fits Isn't that. that something? So that we want a nice tight fit. Not any big gaps every, every station has got its own form yeah That's it flattens awesome. out up there but back here around the tunnel it's really important to have that what's this all made out of fur, fur. so as much pre-game as we could possibly do we did and that 
the way they come up with the jig and the guide pieces is pretty smart. It's pretty cool. And also in the stringers is the locations for the engine mounts. Where, where the engine mounts go, there's already aluminum embedded and G10 embedded. So we don't have to guess about where that's got to go or have to worry about that once the stringers go in the boat. This is the mezzanine. That's your first step. That's your second step. Nice. I got you. That's even better. It's perfect. Awesome. And then what did we do for, so I know the engine room hatch, drink box, freezer thing. Flipped over, so that side would be the ice dump. This side would be the freezer. That's your engine room access, right. storage, chamois, right. and then bait pops. Right. You get a corner of it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> All right. That looks good, man. Having three modeling is the most incredible part of what we do. Um, there's no guesswork. If you design it, it fits in 3D. 99% of the time it's going to fit in the boat and having a molded boat we know exactly where our surfaces are going to be exactly where offsets are it's, it's not a guess it's a hundred percent we know where certain things go what's going to fit what's not going to fit so down the road with, with if you do a, a 2d it looks good on paper but 3d if it fits it's it's there Dan Botchin has been huge for us as far as design he's been in the business for 40 years and he does all of our in-house design. He's designed all the plants, all the inserts, and then our guys on the CNC machine cut them out. DLBA, Gibbs and Cox is the parent company, but um, Donald Blunt Associates is, is who's our, been our naval architect and they've been absolutely incredible to work with. We gave them a, a model that we had designed in-house and they took it and tweaked the bottom and, and to make it what we wanted and what they wanted so it all works. So it, it, it's been a very good partnership for this project and they've been they've just been great to work with Chris Wanhart has been he's been in the business for you know, 30 years as well and he's designed Buddy Davis's Bayless's he's he's gone right through the, the pedigree of boats so he is he is top-notch so it's uh it's been great to work with them guys you guys are pretty okay it's working out the biggest challenge is making sure that we make weight and making sure that every part and piece is calculated and we don't miss anything. That way, by the time we're said and done with this boat, we know exactly where we're going to be and there's no questions about it, it making weight for the crane to pick it up. As far as the lamination side, the lifting points and all that, it's equivalent to what we do with the stays for the catamaran. So it's nothing new for us. We've been through it a half dozen times or more now. So it, that side of it, it's not a big deal. But all in all, other than the, the lamination and the weight, it's a very simple boat. It's, it's made to fish, made to chase big blue marlin. So it's pretty cool. So where the hole is like that and the tube sits in there, the water gets trapped up on this side of the tube and up on the forward side of the tube. So we just got to keep, but however you want to do it so that we can keep the water out of there. Gotcha. Steve is, is a legend and every time he talks, we listen. He's He's been through more boat builds than most people. Anthony, he's been great as well. Top notch, first class people. Couldn't ask for any, any better people to work for. Yeah, hey, they've been first class for sure. Uh, I mean, it's gonna be perfect for them because it's designed and based around their requests. You know, we've had our input as far as the way the, the look and the ride and different opinions on things, but, you know, it's like, as far as like gunnel height and, you know, they have certain little requirements that they've had that they've had challenges with through the process of their war, world tour and they're trying to work that out in this boat. So it's, you know, you, you learn from trial and error and they've had a lot of trial and error and that's going to be reflected on this thing. The degree of perfection that they have it to now and the degree of completeness that it's to is we're getting close man i think we only had just the brow mold here when i was here last and we got we've got every part here now their attention to detail and then what i like the most what i appreciate the most is that them being fishermen they have the same attitude and when we talk about things we discuss it openly and it's it's like if 
I want something done and and uh, they don't have any opposition to it as far as hurting the boat in some other way. They're more than willing to help us work on it and put it together and so so the end product is really the exact tool that, that we need, you know, or weapon that we're going to be using here for the next bunch of years. It's going to help me get to fish a couple more years because I just can't keep fishing on that 33. <laughs> Still a little sore from that thing from the last trip, but yeah, it's definitely, uh, you know, with the stability that we're going to have and the soft ride and all that stuff, it's, it's just going to be such a huge asset. It, 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 it'll probably be our primary fishing boat. To have this boat on the world tour is, you know, it's it's going to be a statement for them. You know, it's designed for them how they want it. And for us to be able to, to give them what they're wanting is just, it, it, there's nothing I want to see more than a, a grander in the cockpit of it. That's going to be, it's not if, it's when. Them guys, as, as hard as they fish, it's going to happen. And uh, I can't wait to, to see the pictures or uh, videos of, of the whole deal. The number one question is why Crossway? Why not? <laughs> <laughs>